Fred Boy is back. And some of you guys are saying, Fred, why are you flip-flopping diets? You're not carnivore anymore. You're contradicting yourself. I'll have you know, I did a sourdough bread recipe video on this channel like four or five years ago. So I've been a bread boy for longer than you think. Hey, maybe if you bought some Wi-Fi shielding clothing, wore a few layers, had a Wi-Fi shielding hat, your organs might function well enough to digest the bread and your brain might function well enough to open your mind, be more objective about the nutrition dietetic demigod genius master. Huh? Let's, let's get a little bit closer to reality here. All right. Anyway, the reason we're making a three to four hour bread recipe video is because sourdough is a crazy long laborious process, 48 hours to 72 hours. And you're spending like two to three hours of labor in those 72 hours and there's specific timing. It's crazy because you know, you can't be home at specific times of the day. If you have a job, if you're doing things, sourdough bread is really like almost a, a part-time job when you're making it. So this is great even though it's not the best digesting, not the healthiest, healthiest, it's still better than virtually anything you're going to get at the market. So let's get started. Ingredients are as basic as it gets, but we're going organic, which removes the negatives, the agrochemicals, and is really what makes this healthy, something you can eat without poisoning yourself. So we just have all purpose flour, organic, cane sugar, organic. I guess this is a decent quality yeast. I saw this in the store. It's not, maybe you can get organic yeast somewhere. I really don't know, but we're just using Caputo, Italian yeast, and we have a little bit of salt. So if you don't have an automatic mixer, you're going to have to you know, mix everything by hand in a bowl and then also knead it by hand. So a bit more labor intensive to say the least. Four and a half cups of flour, one and two thirds cups of water. And to keep this recipe super simple and super easy, although it's not uh, precise exact by the book, we're doing a tablespoon of yeast, a tablespoon of sugar, and a tablespoon of salt. All right, so we incorporated everything we're gonna take off the paddle and put on the dough hook. Now, even though there are bakeries by me that make organic bread, sourdough bread, naturally fermented stuff, you can bet a lot of money they're just using the regular tap water or whatever water is coming into their facility that's full of fluoride and chlorine. So even though this isn't naturally fermented, because you're using a high quality water, it kind of makes up for it. All right, now that the dough hook's on here, we're gonna put it on medium speed for about eight minutes. That doesn't sound good. I actually replaced all the gears in this, but maybe the motor needs to be replaced too. So it's been about eight minutes. And when we pull our dough, it has like a lot of resistance to it. So we built up all the gluten that we need to. So we have our dough spread nicely in the bottom of this bowl. If it's above 70 degrees, you can just leave this on the counter for an hour or two, depending on the temperature. And it should rise to about double. And then we're good to go to the next step. If it's below 70 degrees, you gotta put this in like the oven with the light on or maybe just turn the oven on for a minute or two and just get it warmer. Maybe like a dehydrator as well. It should be about 75, 80 degrees for this to, to proof properly or when you put the water in, you could uh, heat the water up to like 90, 100 degrees. That'll help keep this at the proper temperature. Now, if you're not in a rush, you can put this bread in the fridge for 12 hours and the yeast will kind of break it down like a sourdough. It's not a natural yeast culture, but um, that would make the bread a lot more digestible. And I'll probably do that moving forward because it's not really more work. Uh, you just have to wait. And then after you take that bread out of the fridge after 12 hours, then you would just let it proof for the hour or two at the warmer temperature. So we're just gonna wrap this on top so that you know the dough doesn't dry out. And we'll check back in about two hours. It was a little cold, so we actually put the bowl in the oven with the door cracked slightly open. It's maybe you know, 15, 20 degrees warmer in here. So pretty good, about 85, 90 uh, to let this dough have risen. Now we take a look at this. The dough has obviously risen a bit, increased in size. So now we're gonna form this into two loaves. I'm just gonna put a bit of flour down on the counter so it doesn't stick. Oh, you know what? Last time I made this bread, I actually added uh, a tablespoon of oil to the recipe, which you should probably do. Although it's not traditional, it'll make it a lot easier to, uh, to handle not as sticky. So we're just going to kind of deflate, punch down the dough by folding it a few times. And then we're going to cut it in half. So 
So I'm just going to form a regular oval loaf, you know, in the context that you don't have a lot of kitchen equipment. If you do have a loaf pan, uh, I guess you could do that as well. So we're just going to spread this out kind of like a, a rectangle. And then we're going to fold it over itself. Fold the sides in. And then fold it over itself the other way. And then flip it over. Spread it out a little bit. And that's going to be our final shape. Same thing with the second one. Just spread it out a little bit. Try to get it into a rectangle shape. We're going to fold it down over itself once. In over itself. And then the other way, fold it again. Flip that over. And just try to spread it out a little bit and make it even. So this is what our two loaves look like. We're gonna pop them back in this top oven to proof for about 45 minutes. So while these are proofing, we're gonna preheat the bottom oven to 500 degrees. And just leave this open a little bit so it doesn't get too hot in there. So bread's been proofing for almost an hour and the bottom oven's been preheating for that same length of time. As you guys could see, the, the bread has gotten a bit bigger and it kind of spread out to the side because there's no way to kind of contain the rise to go up. So that's why you might want to use a loaf pan if you want something with more uniform shape. Uh, so we're just gonna take a sharp knife and score the top three times across so that we control where the bread breaks. I would say about a quarter inch deep slashes in the top of the bread. So now you want to be really careful because when you open up this oven, a ton of hot air is going to come out. So we want to be pretty far away from the oven and you want to have some ice cubes ready because we want to steam this bread. You don't have to do this step, but it, it helps with the crust and I've seen it on every single recipe, so I'm not going to question it. So we just open up the oven, stay away so we don't get blasted with the heat, put the bread in, and then we can take some ice cubes out and all the ice cubes are going to melt in the bottom of the oven let off the steam and that's going to steam the bread so we're going to leave this in here for about 25 minutes and we should have a nice crusty top so it has been approximately 25 minutes and our bread looks nothing short of perfection very very nice rose up really well hard crust on the outside now what i like to do is, is since these were on the pan the whole time I like to flip them over let them cool off that way so that the bottom doesn't really steam anymore but guys these look very very good very amazing impressive presentation very fast very easy might be a little dense on the inside but that's about it. So you wanna let these cool for at least half an hour. I mean, if you were really starving, hungry, you know, you could slice some end pieces off, dip them in some cold butter, because once you get a little bite of this bread, you will not stop eating it. It is so delicious when it's fresh. I mean, hopefully at some point in the reasonably near future, I'm able to open up my own bakery because, you know, when you mill your own flour, when the bread is fresh baked every single day, when you use high quality water, when you properly ferment it, there is just nothing like it. Even just this three hour recipe in my home oven, like just me BSing, not professional at all. The bread tastes better than any bread I've ever bought anywhere. And as I said, when you take a bite of this, you're just gonna keep eating it, keep eating it, keep eating it. So I haven't been fat yet. And I'm bread boy uh, for the past two years now. So I really, really hope you guys enjoy this recipe. You'll definitely impress your family, any dinner guests you have. So as always, thank you guys for joining me. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you can go to frank-tefano.com to check out and support me 
all of my businesses. Hey, who knows? Maybe we'll be shipping frozen bread at one point. I wouldn't put it past me. I've lost my mind. Thank you.